my lovely, lovely imps, we have just finished on the live side of things listening to the Boogie 2988 documentary. I highly recommend you go check out the Drama Mama special feature that I did on that if you're watching this as a video. Um, but we are about to listen to some extra context about the documentary that has come out in following days. And we're going to start by reacting right now to H3H3. Um, and then we are going to move on to listening to some ordinary gamers. And then I have another video that I uh, would like to check out as well, um, if we have the time to get to that. So uh, without any further ado, let's hear what H3H3 had to say about the P Boogie 2988 documentary. On um, another dude's podcast, mm -hmm. Boogie started a podcast with, I guess, Keemstar's producing it. This is Keemstar's brainchild, I think. Mm -hmm. And it includes Boogie and two other guys, and they're, it's called the Lol Cow Podcast, or Lol Cow. Oh, dude, that's so bad. Wait, that just really, wait, that alone, I didn't even know that that was what they were doing. That alone just tells you, that, that's, that, that confirms my analysis. He's just playing, the character he's playing now is a lol cow, and he's just going to try and further make money off of it. Oh my god, come on. Alive. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And, um, so, they're planning And it this... seems to be a way to try and help Boogie out of his financial situation, <clears throat> is my understanding. Well, sure, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's one, uh, reason that, yeah. that King Star is, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh... And, uh, just... <laughs> Just like Keem invited him to box for that reason. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's all for him. It's, yeah. for, it's for his. It's in his interest, which is exactly why he. Um. You, you can understand the words he says here. It's clearly in his self interest. So he went on this other dude's podcast and had a screaming match with Mudahar, and Keem starts angry oh, because. Wait. Does anybody have a link to that? Does anybody ha else have the? Does anybody have a link to the screaming match between him and Mudahar? I would love to see that. If anybody can get me that link, that's that's the that's the third thing I would like to listen to here. That conversation should have happened on their podcast mm -hmm. to because me to talk. The, you know what I mean. Like this is this is this is was a huge moment that he wasted on this other dude's show. Here, let's actually start with the voice note. And we had to we had to take extensive censoring. Oh, are they gonna uh, play it here? On this, just because it is there's just a lot, and I'm trying to be a good boy. But the words that are blurred out or dropped is the the uh the F word and the R word restarted to be specific. Right. Okay, so, so here here's is the a direct link. Game start. And this was leaked by someone else that was in the chat, which we love them for that. <laughs> Fuck you and your stupid fucking head. Your fucking retarded fucking head. I talked to you before you went on. I, in my other group chat, people were like, oh, Boogie's calling into Rich. I fucking called you. We spoke. I said, don't give Rich the tea. Your exact words to me were, oh, I'm just going to go on there and tell him I'm busy, right? So you call into Rich. You tell him I'm busy. He starts milking you. You start answering every question because you're an attention fucking freak and then you have a face off Thank with you. muta on rich's stream the face off between you and muta should be on your podcast that's monetized that you make money on Fuck you and your stupid fucking head this is not a mistake this is not an accident you fucking re you did this on purpose. I talked to you before you went in. I fucking hate you. Fuck you. All the time and effort into this fucking show to help you guys out. And you don't you can't do the simplest task. I fucking hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Re so yeah. The ending just, uh, the ending really just pushed it over for me. Oh, man. I know Keemstar has been on some hard times lately ever since the, uh, the, the commentary community group chat leaks happened. I know that, uh, I know that he's been having a rough time, but, uh, that is, that is really funny, okay? I'm, I'm so sorry. That is, that is really good. Yeah, obviously I fucked up. Uh, I was just gonna go there to promote the show. I didn't know Muda was going to come in there and pull his shit. I should have left when Muda showed up and said, save it for the show. 
Uh, but <laughs> you're right. I respect your decision. Let me know really if you are. need any of the passwords or anything like that. <laughs> I'll be glad to hand them over. And uh, oh. let me have to change your mind. <laughs> no. There's a lot to unpack here. First, I want to say that Keemstar is putting Boogie on a show called Lol Cow. Lol Cow is someone that you can basically abuse and harass and troll online endlessly for lols. So he is... Uh, cow pork. Yeah, so, so he wants this lol cow on his show, but he's getting angry at him for being a lol cow. He went on someone else's podcast and he did his lol cow thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so on one... Here's the, here's the real Giga Brain play. What if the freak out is also a part of the lol cow thing? Everybody, it's all bullshit, man. It's all bullshit. All of it's bullshit. What's true? What's false? Who fucking cares in the end? Well, I mean, I care a little bit because it is funny. On one hand, Team Star, you, you have to reckon with the fact that this is why you wanted him to begin with, right? Yeah. So that's number one. Two, God, it's so sad how Boogie responds. <laughs> My heart can't take it. The response is crazy. I'm Boogie, sorry, you did not bro. deserve that. Just going from, fuck! No, no, he, he totally did. I, I totally disagree. He totally deserves that. This is what he, that's what he wants. Boogie wants to be treated like that. You fuck! Oh, wait, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do it that much or we'll get demonetized too. Uh, yeah, going from that to Boogie just being like, yep, you're right. I'm I think sorry. he does feel bad, you know, but again, this is the thing you got, you can't, you know, get angry at the, uh, uh, you can't get angry at the monkey for throwing shit at you. It's just what they do. Right. <laughs> Maybe there's a better uh, analogy. But this, it's like the you scorpion, can't get the scorpion and the frog. Right. A but, uh, classic, uh, fable. Yeah. You're right. Th all right. Good. Thank it's, you. It's in his nature. You know. I respect your decision. Exactly. Damn, they're quick. It. They're quick on those sound bites. I'm impressed. They're quick on that. Keem calls Muda Muda now. Yeah, now why do you call him Muda? He's slowly changing his name. We call him Mewtwo next next month. <laughs> Mewtwo. I, I did notice that. I found that interesting. Muda to Har. The other thing I've noticed is that I think XLR. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Deeply appreciate your support. Thank you so much. This Keemstar guy has anger issues. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, now that Keemstar is kind of like, I don't think anyone takes him seriously on the internet. And now when I watch something like this, you can, I feel like I can really see him for the, the damaged little boy that he is and that he's, he's really lashing out from this place of, I mean, he's very damaged. He's very damaged. That's Daddy. my, again, I'm not a psychologist and. I don't mean to diagnose you're very him, welcome, I'm not Squig. diagnosing it. Thank you very much for the $10 Super Chat, Squigvig, and you're very, very welcome. Um, it's, just a, it's just a bad argument, and it also obscures real issues, so I think it's important to talk about from time to time. Although I'm sure that um, if... I'm not, I'm not saying anything. That's I'm not beautiful. even going to finish that sentence. Okay. okay. Nice. That's beautiful. Thank you. And then uh, a um, ten-year-old fan right away. But um, wow! I mean, Keemstar is back on the menu. And then, <laughs> well, here's where it gets not very funny. This is a, a message he sent him. Was this after? Let me see the timestamp. Ten forty-four. This was sent at. So this was sent before the the voice note. He said, "I effing hate you." But he said, "Yeah, I respect that." Keem said, "Do you need attention that?" <laughs> <laughs> Stop! You yeah, get I that. That. <laughs> Why do you? I I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine feeling bad for Boogie at all, given the documentary that we just watched, when he's so blatantly and obviously playing a pathetic loser character in all of this. Like this is this is all probably staged as well. Keem and Boogie are like, okay, let's let let me let me scream at you in the group chat so we can further milk your lol cow status fucking keemstar is he runs a show or did i think he stopped running it now of called drama alert keemstar is the ancient fucking drama inventor that's all he does is manufacture drama that's his entire thing oh my god such a crazy no. response 
Kim said, do you need attention that much that you just gave away our entire effing second episode? Ugh, this, I don't, blank yourself in the face right now. Did I commute? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. for yeah. what that means. Just understand that I pro if I showed this to you, I probably couldn't monetize the whole podcast. Yeah. And then you can use your imagination. It said, blank yourself in the face right now. God, I effing hate you. And this is Keemstar, who, let's be real, is probably not the right person to be uh, telling people to unalive themselves, considering he does have... <sighs> let's just say that uh, some people may have taken him up on that uh, ad uh, advice uh, previously. He has a high KDA, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Well, for real life, yeah. For Call of Duty, it's it's mid, but for real life, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, 1-0 is even crazy for real life. For, for sure, yeah. Uh, but, um, but that's what that is, so. I'm following closely. I'm... He also used to call himself Killer Keemstar True. Oh, wow. He was Whoa. trying to tell us in the very beginning. Shit. Murderer. That's interesting. So, Kimi, Dreamy, we love you. We miss you. Welcome back, my you friend. It. It's been so long. So, so long. Where's the, the original Boogie convo? I wanted to listen to that. That, that pissed Kim off. The argument with, the, <coughs> with Muta? <laughs> with Muta, yeah. To Muta to heart. It's, uh, we'll put it in the... So, wait. Do they listen to it? Okay, we can go listen to this ourselves, then. I would rather react to that ourselves, which we can do because we have that here. Okay, so that was interesting. The DM leaks were what we were mostly interested in here because that is not in the original video. So now we're going to watch the conflict between Boogie. Wait, hold on. I have to check which order this is in. Okay, so that was November 9th. This was November 10th. Okay. So here's what we're going to do next. So we keep everything in order. That's how we do things here on the uh, Drama Mama bonus content. Uh, next, we are going to watch Muda's video on Boogie2988, which will then lead in to finally the confrontation with Boogie2988. So let's watch it. Let's do it. This is Some Ordinary Gamers, Boogie2988 is Completely Pathetic video, which is Hello, what guys. led... Which is what led to the conflict that Keemstar and Boogie were fighting about. Mudahar, let's do it. And gals, me Mudahar, and let's talk about micro celebrities on YouTube. Okay, one of my biggest inspirations were people like Angry Video Game Nerd, Nostalgia Critic. You know, people that would produce you know relatively high quality videos for their time, still to this day. Relatively, relatively. I'm sorry. Even 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 Nostalgia Critic still did good quality videos. I mean, his stuff has fallen off really hard. Angry Video Game Nerd has not, has like, it's not the same as it used to be, but Angry Video Game Nerd's quality is still really good. Like if you go watch recent Angry Video Game Nerd videos, they're really high quality videos. It is true that that uh, Nostalgia Critic did fall off in quality pretty hard, but still, still, still. Uh, and uh, they would re review video games, movies, and Good whatnot. night, Dracula. Thanks See, for being here. See, these guys were from a time almost 20 years ago at this point, okay? Not 20 years ago, but 10 to 20, okay? Almost two decades. And these were some of the first people on the internet as micro-celebrities. See, back in the day, it was kind of baffling to think that you could upload videos on the internet and make money out of them and sustain a living, let alone an entire business even in some people's cases. Obviously, YouTube has evolved to the point where some of the biggest celebrities in the world are starting to come from here or TikTok or other places. People that are known internationally by millions, if not billions. But of course, Boogie2988 was one of those people that was there in the beginning. Now, everyone falls off the internet. It's not uncommon. You know, I think being lucky enough to do this in the first place is already the reward. Obviously, nobody's a Simpsons or Family Guy and lasts forever. But Boogie is one of those cases where not only has he fallen off, but he's cratered to the center of the goddamn planet. And it's all because Boogie himself is a liar, 
Boogie himself is a manipulator, and he's somebody that I think is probably one of the most awful peoples on this platform. And the reason why I'm saying it is because Boogie has had a history of contradictions, of lies, of manipulating his yep. fans into thinking that he's this Fucking broke, true. financially crippled individual, when in reality, he's just too scared of giving up the life of luxury that he currently still clings on to just so that he can hold on just a little bit longer. And we'll actually come in through a lot of contradictions through this video. It's gonna be long, so sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and talk about it. One of the reasons why I'm even talking about it too is because Boogie's the kind of guy that during discussions, he'll just start messaging my wife, which absolutely still disgusts me to this day. For the last 48 hours, I've still been pretty- Holy shit, that's fucking really weird mad about that but we'll get to all that in a little bit one of the catalysts Wait, okay, for this sorry I, hold on order okay we are watching in the correct order false alarm sorry about that is something that boogie is promoting his own documentary the dark sad life of boogie 2988 which is not on his channel it's on a okay there's zero percent chance that i mean obviously there's always going to be downstream he hasn't an, he has an incentive to promote the documentary because it drives people to his channel but there's no fucking shot that he's not getting something in kickbacks from that video. Channel from somebody known as Mike Klum, who has produced this 55 minute documentary, pretty much putting Boogie in front of the world, in front of the actual normal audience, and showing that he is somebody that doesn't want to be helped, he just wants to be a professional goddamn victim. So let's actually look through a few highlights of this documentary, and I'll build upon uh, things that I, I, I feel need further context. Now, right, Boogie has a history of financial problems Bye, on the platform, and he talks about how he actually only has $2,700 left in his bank account, and his actual mortgage on his home is currently at $183,000, according to when this documentary was filmed. Now, obviously, I'm kind of surprised. I think Boogie should have been able to pay off a $250,000 mortgage, from what I understand, his quarter million dollar crib. Hey, my name is Boogie2988. And this is my quarter million dollar home. How he hasn't been able to do that after the amount of money that he's earned on the platform is beyond me. Now, Boogie will say that he didn't really earn a lot of money on the platform. Yeah, right, right. So in two or three months, you made as much as I made all 17 years on the platform to some degree. Like as much as I was able to save after everything, right? Um, and I never made the kind of money you guys think I did because I just struck my fame way too early on the platform and it just the money wasn't there back then. The money's there now, but it wasn't then. I've never made 70 or 1,000. You know what my biggest monthly paycheck on YouTube was? Uh, not including sponsors, about $17,000. Including sponsors, the most I ever made in a month was about 30K. So this is how to catch a contradiction 101. When Boogie just claimed that he made $30,000 with sponsors on his best month, even if you took the annual earning, like you multiply that by 12, which you should never do. Obviously your peak month is your peak month. You're gonna have off months. But again, if you went with the most utopian earning model, you would look at $360,000 pre-taxed. According to this documentary, which again, he gave the producer Mike Klum full access to his financials, allegedly, 2018, he made 498,000 US dollars. So again, mm. putting that up with his- Uh-oh, uh-oh. Come, putting that up with the mortgage that he had on his house, it should have been paid for. Because ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest here, okay? It's insane. This person has seen such a massive earnings drop off in 2019, 2020, 21, 22, that he should have absolutely accounted for some serious rumbling in his financials. Maybe this is when you should have started downsizing. But then let's see what Boogie is careful on spending money in. According to this documentary, he has spent over $200,000 on escorts, basically sugaring. Sugaring, if you don't know, is the act of basically uh, finding women online who have a financial relationship with you. You take them out on nice dates, you buy them nice things, and there's an expectation of sexual reward at the end of it for the person doing the purchasing, the sugar daddy and the sugar baby relationship. So again, this is what this guy spends his money on. His financial ruin was caused because he believes he should be able to fuck LA 10s instead of the Arkansas 8s as he claims in that documentary. But again, this is just Boogie and how he views the people around him. He doesn't look at relationships like a normal human being. He looks at a relationship in the same sense of like a pure transaction. Yeah. And when it comes to his money, that much is he very clear. is his own destructive person on that regard. He had the money, he threw it all away. 
One of the most egregious things in this situation is him admitting to throwing his life and money away in cryptocurrency. So listen to this part from the documentary. It's baffling. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it into crypto and then lost a shitload of it. Well, here's everything. If you want to see, there's 2,000. So he starts with seven. Yeah, so far, these are some pretty good points from Muda here. Uh, and uh, they're basically similar things that I brought up when we were reacting, saying that we don't really know what the truth is about all these numbers, that we're just trusting Boogie's word on it. And then also we're trusting a documentarian who has no, pr no footprint on the internet. Uh, Mike Klum, this is his first video, so he's got no credibility to, to stand on as far as be, whether we should trust him or not. $150,000 apparently sitting in liquid savings. He puts six, he puts basically all that money into cryptocurrency because he had a friend known as McJuggernuggets at the time, according to him, where he actually uh, talked about putting money into cryptocurrency. So this nearly 50 year old man thinks that putting money into the most volatile fucking currency is a smart choice. Now again, this is the guy that bragged to people that he actually is crypto rich all of a sudden. Right? Oh yeah, that's that's the most disgusting thing about this, is that he tried to get other people, he basically tried to beef up the crypto market and get other people involved in it. Right, like one day he's like, I'm finally rich. How crypto made me rich, listen to this one. It was a very stupid, ris stupid, risky maneuver, but I invested pretty much everything I had into cryptocurrency and I pulled it out a couple of times and I put it back in a couple of times. Uh, so I probably didn't do as well as I could have, but I invested all the way back here. And yeah, that's where we currently are with that market. So wait, hold on. Oh man. If they get his math on the Bitcoin shit, I think this might fucking blow the lid off of his bullshit. To say that I doubled my money is an understatement. In fact, I... All right, so he literally admits to just straight up gambling his money. And he won for a little bit, too. Now, instead of pulling that money out, he just basically let it fester and turn into nothing overnight. Now, anybody could tell you that putting money into cryptocurrency, such a volatile currency, was a stupid decision anyways but boogie actually won and still lost now boogie made a video a year after that where he said i need your help where he actually had to go around and tell people yeah we reacted to this video uh when it came out or around the time that it came out you can find that on my channel the demon mama channel just go ahead and search on my channel boogie and you'll find it we talked about it in the past yeah, I lost all my money and I might have to go, oh God, get a fucking job? Oh no, how dare that? Listen to this one. I feel good, I feel good. And I'm excited to do it again. The bad reason is I'm finally in a position where I have to get back to work. And I'm not making any excuses here. You know I spent a tremendous amount of money on dumb, dumb things. Hookers. But the biggest issue is that I had a nice big nest egg I took some financial advice from a friend and I'm not pointing fingers necessarily. I took the advice. I'm not pointing fingers. A friend of mine suggested I invest everything into crypto. Okay. So you're not pointing fingers, but you just did. Like, see, that's the level of hypocrisy that I like to call out in this situation because he's just guilty of so many points of that. But I put my money in. The also, so he claims he doubled his money. He said he put $750,000 into Bitcoin and that he doubled it, which would have meant, you know, he's got like, you know, $1.5 million. And then he says he lost 650 million or 650,000. But that still leaves um, more, more than, that still leaves nearly a million dollars unaccounted for. And he didn't pay off his house, apparently. And he didn't put that money anywhere. He just spent all of it on... He, only, he said he only spent 200000 on escorts. So then that still leaves somewhere in the ballpark of, of seven, you know, six to $700,000 um, that's just unaccounted for by his own recollection of his finances. So, huh, something's, like I said at the very beginning in the previous video, if you're watching in the, 
non-live, but just a little bit ago when we were watching the documentary for you live viewers, uh, uh, something's not adding up. Crypto market in the wrong section, and I pretty much lost most of everything. That's it's got to be microtransactions. No, you can't. That's just not. There's no way. Even in the most ridiculous circumstance where he spent a hundred thousand dollars on microtransactions, which is insane. That's not even whales will spend that much. Um, that still leaves him with multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars plus his monthly income. Something is not adding up here. Sucks. That really sucks. It is what it is, though. I mean, like, I've come to terms with and yeah, you might be wondering, oh my God, should I feel bad for the situation? No, because even after losing all of that money, Boogie still has money saved over from those losses. That $30,000 something worth of crypto, according to his account, it actually exists in his balance as an asset. Now, even after losing all of that money, Boogie still apparently has $30,000 in assets remaining in cryptocurrency. Now, I looked up the average uh, salary of his state, which apparently is uh, Arkansas, $48,000 a year, okay? To give you an idea, most people don't have $30,000 in their savings at any given moment because True. the cost of living these True. days is so fucking high that you earn the money right now yearly and all of it goes to bills, all of it goes to sustaining yourself. People live paycheck to paycheck. And yet Boogie here has still $30,000 left in a shit coin that he can cash out at any given moment and start using that money to rebuild his life. Nobody is telling Boogie to stay in a house that he cannot afford. Boogie talks about paying off this mortgage of his that's apparently like three, uh, what was it? Like it's a quarter million dollar house. Apparently his mortgage still on the house, according to the documentary, is somewhere around $165,000. Now, what's insane is in this own documentary, Boogie will admit his actual annual income in 2018 alone was nearly half a million U.S. dollars. How this guy yeah, it's, uh... didn't pay off his house, but decided to put that money into an entire gamble. Literally, it's like going to a goddamn casino, putting your entire life savings all on black and expecting people to care about you when you've lost it all. Dog. You caused all of your life's problems. You cannot guilt trip your audience into caring about your finances, your well-being, when you just gamble it all away like a f child. He could downsize his life. He could get rid of the house, move to an apartment with two rooms. After all, you've only got you and a girlfriend. You can have one room for your YouTube stuff, one bedroom, and your living room where is the center of your life, apparently. You can put your TV in, your sound bar, your video game consoles. There is no shame in cutting down your life. It's like this. If I can't- well, I mean, there's another part of this too that hasn't been discussed, which is the house is, is like a quarter million house. He could just move to a smaller house. Like he doesn't even have to go to an apartment. He could just move to a smaller house. Afford my house. I'm never going to actually guilt trip you guys on a YouTube video and tell you guys, yeah, I really wish I could stay in my house. And, you know, you guys better start donating money to like live streams or, uh, you know, you better start buying some merch. No, I'm going to have to go out, find a way to make money on my own and sustain the lifestyle I live in. And if I have to downsize, there is no shame in that. People do it. Businesses do it all the time. It's okay to cut back and reevaluate where you are in your life when your financial situation changes. Boogie refuses to do it because at the core, this person is a man-child that refuses to actually take accountability for his own actions and pivot his life accordingly. Instead, he'll point fingers at everybody else instead of himself and do anything worth changing. It's like the fast food stuff. This man has the option to change his life for the better. He refuses to do so, so what does it matter anymore? Now, according to this documentary, Boogie has a lot of health problems. Obviously, he's a big guy. He's going through a lot of confirmed medical dose, uh, diagnoses, according to this documentary. Now, a lot of these medical diagnoses, I've talked to my wife, who's a medical professional, my father, who's also a medical professional, have told me that a grand majority of these cases can simply be avoided or reversed had he decided to lose the weight. This is one of the most important things for Boogie where it comes to weight loss, an actual goal that he has never managed to bring across to the table. Uh, he has went through a gastric bypass that he himself has admitted to completely fail. And one of the reasons why he chooses to constantly fail his aspect of weight loss is because even in this- 
Yasmin says, I know literally nothing about Muda. Is he a good dude? Um, I generally have found him to be uh, pretty good as far as, you know, the type of content that he does. He does some really interesting videos. Um, I don't agree with everything he says, obviously. I don't even really, like, I don't even think this is all that helpful, like, fixating on the weight loss stuff. I just don't think it's that valuable because um, the weight loss aspect is, like, it's, it's, like, the biggest struggle in Boogie's entire life. And, um when you get to a certain size, it becomes like a compounding issue. Um, and also, this is this was true before. Um, even before he had the gastric bypass, he had other compounding health issues. So I just, while it is possible, that, I mean, I believe there's lots of things that Boogie could have done uh, to handle his weight better. I just, I don't know how helpful it is in this particular case, especially when it's pretty obvious that Boogie is not being honest about his finances and that he's trying to manipulate people into feeling bad for him uh, to give him money. His own documentary. Boogie is out there constantly feeding himself with fast food. I swear to God in this documentary, he's probably eaten McDonald's and Taco Bell like three goddamn times. It's no joke. He is just- but Also, that doesn't matter. This is another thing where it's like, wait, I, I pointed this out when we were watching, like pretending like $14 at McDonald's is the problem here when he has a $280,000 mortgage on his house it's a uh, yeah i don't know okay whatever going out of his way to hurt himself these are things that anybody can avoid but boogie refuses to do so because he again prefers to be a victim again he doesn't want to be helped he doesn't want to make even the tiniest things that could change his decrepit lifestyle for the better he just wants you to feel bad for him and that's one of the reasons now that i agree with now that i agree with unequivocally why i don't care if he doesn't want to get better, why should I care that he wants to get better? I can hope. Dude, what is with the focus on this video? Holy shit. Change the autofocus settings, man. Not to like fire at, at a huge YouTuber, but like this guy's mega successful, but the fucking autofocus shit. Jesus Christ, it's driving me crazy. But it doesn't mean that I should- No, no hate, no hate. You're a successful YouTuber, but Jesus Christ. ...necessarily be putting in any of my mental strength into it. It's just manipulative for the fans to constantly be reminded I want to change while doing literally nothing to make your fucking life better at all. Now, in this entire documentary, one of the most insulting parts is when Boogie actually sits down with this interviewer, this recruiter, and purposefully, in my opinion, screws up this interview where yeah, at obvious. least they were telling him to go get a job. Because if you can't make money through YouTube, start getting a job. Yeah, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I'm also a pedophile. I should mention I'm also a felon. Okay. Uh, What's the nature of your felony? Like, she knows that he's not here seriously and I think that kind of just settles in. But listen to what she says, absolute bang on advice. I don't think it's impossible, but you have some challenges. Yeah. Lots of things in life are about your mindset and you're using weight and disability, I can't, I can't, I can't. If that is the attitude that you're gonna have when you approach everything, then you can't, and you won't. And he will never, and she's absolutely right. He always wants to play the victim, and that's what it comes down to. So of course, after this entire documentary, the problem is he goes to Mike Clem and tells him that he's not gonna get a job, and listen to exactly why, listen to this shit, because he couldn't get corporate approval because of his armed uh, felony nature. Uh, I know we're making this documentary and everything, and I know you think I need to get a real job, but I just want to let you know I'm not going to. I I'm not going to walk into some job when I have four million subscribers on YouTube. I'm one of the original YouTubers. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content, go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. Dude, what is this? Why would I walk in and get some job? As if that's a dirty fucking word. Why does he say it like that? Yeah, I, I'm an OG YouTuber. I've got 4 million subscribers. 99% of them do not watch the fucking videos, okay? True, Your subscriber though. True. Extreme disengagement from his fan base. That's true. Burn rate is as high as crypto's burn rate too. You are looking at 99% losses. 
Instead of trying to beat your head against a wall and guilt trip the audience and produce content that, by the way, is inferior to 99% of videos released on this platform to this day. Boy, there's a whole lot of 99%. He refuses to get a job, looks at it as like it's some dirty word, and decides to revive his YouTube channel. Yeah, speaking of which, if you've been enjoying my coverage, please consider donating to support the show. My show is 100% viewer supported, and it would mean the world to me if you throw a couple dollars my way. And if you can't, consider pressing subscribe and like below. Both of those will help me a lot. Thank you which he really hasn't. He's gotten an uptick in views because of videos like mine, like Charlie's, like H3H3 covering him, this documentary, but because Boogie is not naturally an entertaining individual, all right, at least in my opinion, and because he refuses to actually put any effort into anything that he does, it's going to be short-lived. And if people find that mean, I'm sorry, it's the fucking truth. My health insurance is 800. I have $500 worth of medical bills. I have $500 worth of utilities. I, I pay for doctor's visits, physical therapies, labs constantly. I still have to pay for the- This is the part of the film, by the way, where it really started to feel like Boogie was tr attempting intentionally to try and tr like, basically trying to become a lol cow intentionally. Like he already is a little bit of a lol cow, but the part where he's like, I needed Diablo 4, it just feels like, like, too fake. The car that I drive, I still have to pay for car insurance. I still have to pay for health insurance. Diablo 4 came out. I had to buy it. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 came out. I had to buy it. Tears of the Kingdom came out. I had to buy it. That Hold on there, bucko. Uh, Diablo 4 came out. I had to buy it. Tears of the Kingdom came out. I had to buy it. Uh, dog, these are what we call luxuries, okay? You don't need to buy any fucking video game, Boogie, because let me tell you something right now. If you can't afford luxuries, then you need to start downsizing your life. Again, if he can't afford this $2,000 mortgage, consider moving down to an apartment, renting somewhere else. Then you could have the money to buy Diablo 4, or Tears of the Kingdom, or Final Fantasy 16. Point is, cut down your life, okay? Do not put this onto the audience. It's insane how this man can complain about financial irresponsibility when he's sitting in front of these shitty one-up arcade machines from Walmart that actually have no resale value, in my opinion, whatsoever. This man is surrounding himself with toys. Wait, oh my God, they're not even real cabinets? Oh, dude in video games as if he's like a child okay like as if he's as if he's like a kid at the rockefeller center going into like one of the big toy stores dog downsize your life sell off your shit and live normally okay there is no shame in that but again boogie refuses to do it in fact in his mind he feels almost entitled to these luxuries no one is entitled to anything you should feel lucky that you're in a luxurious lifestyle especially when you can't even afford it and this isn't the only case of Boogie doing this. Obviously, he has a history of trying to purchase these extravagant luxuries. Like, there was a saga related to a Tesla Model X, one that I'll oh, let Boogie explain a little bit, too. For $33,000. I ended up buying the X, curfew. Uh he ended up buying the X. The Model X is the most expensive luxury SUV from Tesla Automotive, which, again is their highest price product, okay? Especially when you go specking it out, which I don't think Boogie bought the plaid version of the Tesla. But again, this man is pitching the idea of buying a luxury SUV in front of his audience when apparently his actual financial status, according to him, doesn't reflect it. Um, I still haven't got it fully financed yet. I'm having to finance it, obviously. I can't spend $100,000 in a day. That would be insane, right? But I am financing it, okay? Um, and so he's like, he's like, Boogie, how many fans are going to end up buying a Model S because of you? And I'm like, okay, all right, that's fair. He goes, what if we put 10 more cars on the road? Think about the impact you're making in the world where you put 10 more cars on the road. I'm like, I yeah, this is probably some of the dumbest stuff that I heard, and I wanted to add it in Jesus for a bit of comedy Christ. relief. Anytime you come across the most degenerate car salesman like this, you run, okay? First off, adding 10, 20 more cars on the street is not offsetting the fucking carbon pollutions that making those Teslas, in my opinion, are going to cause. And also, I don't think anybody in your audience is also going out to buy another luxury executive sedan because they're watching Boogie drive his Model X. That's Anyways, the point of this insane. was Boogie insane. has a history of Actually constantly insane. being financially stupid and putting that onto the audience. And when you start mentioning things like this and you start mentioning Oh, I can't spend $100,000 in a day. There is an element of, in my opinion, guilt tripping that sort of passes on to the audience as well, too. 
But again, we're gonna leave that over there. I think I've covered his money situation way too much, okay? And I think, honestly, it's more than he deserves because he doesn't care about changing it, and that's pretty much what it comes down to. If he doesn't care about making his life better, it is what it is. Now, obviously, some of you all will remember that Boogie had an issue with an individual known as Frank Hassel, where he actually fired a gun right into the air, which caused him to actually be in some serious legal troubles uh, that cost him a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of that could have been avoided had Boogie not brought that on himself. Listen to this clip right now. This is an interview that he had on Drama Alert with Frank Hassel, where it actually sounds so fucking unhinged, I couldn't make this up if I tried. This is status quo for me. So show the f up, and let me show you how I handle status quo. Why do you keep threatening to shoot me? This is weird. Because I'm going to f kill you and take pleasure doing it. Well, I've, I've, I had never heard that clip. Jesus Christ. I had literally never heard that clip. Doing it. That's <laughs> I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take pleasure. Shut the fuck doing. up. Go eat your candy. Okay. Okay. You okay. need to chill, bro. No, okay. You're less than four miles away from me last night. Do You can't drive four miles. You Dude. can't drive four fucking miles. To actually so, Boogie, uh... But while being visibly scared for his life, apparently, enough that he had to respond to the door with a firearm when the other party didn't have a gun, was literally telling that party to come to his house. Meaning that even if he had castle doctrine, he couldn't get through it. He couldn't actually make it valid. He invited the problem to his house. You cannot invite somebody to your premises Holy and then shit. threaten to shoot them. That okay, that's actually, that, that, that means I have to offer a small retraction to one thing that I said. I mean, okay, still, it doesn't really, the section that I was talking about, it was still weird psychoanalyzing that didn't quite apply. But yeah, that does make it a lot worse. I didn't know about that. That is not how castle doctrine works, okay? That's not even how hassle doctrine works. But again, a lot of these problems Boogie causes on himself because he's impulsive and he, he just, he doesn't think about it. Now, recently Boogie has entered a relationship with a girl that is, uh, I guess, 20 while he's 49 uh, or 50. And uh, it's a very, very massive age gap. Now, obviously I'm not here to, 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 to get on somebody's ass about a perfectly legal relationship. I wanna remind everyone, when you're over the age of 18, you can date an 80 year old, okay? At the end of the day, that's the law. But the law is not always ethical. And obviously for people who sit down and look at these relationship dynamics, people are going to be creeped out. Now in private group chats and private DMs, some of them which have been leaked, I have been in those DMs calling Boogie a weird person, okay? Not spreading rumors, I've just been calling it weird behavior. And that's because I think this is weird behavior. Boogie's girlfriend that he's been touting off is 20 years of age, obviously far more junior to him, and she doesn't appear to have a lot of life skills, obviously a lot of life, uh, I guess you could say experience, and their relationship was built on something known as trauma bonding. Oh. A trauma bond, oh, which according man. to this- That's even worse. That's even worse. That makes it even fucking worse. Why was that not in the documentary? Holy shit. Situation follows a cycle and rests on an imbalance of power. Leaving an abusive relationship usually isn't as simple as walking out the door. Uh, the emotional attachment known as a trauma bond develops out of a repeated cycle of abuse, devaluation, and positive reinforcement. It's only natural to develop a bond with someone who treats you with kindness. Many abusive relationships begin with a shower of affection and assurances of love. These attempts to manipulate often succeed since you remember the early days of a relationship. Now, I assume that Boogie is not referring to that type of trauma bonding. I think they literally are referring to the fact that obviously both of them have been through rough situations in life and by sharing it, by, uh, by, by, by being comfortable with one another, that's how the relationship is built up off. Now, obviously for most people who look into this, they might think that this is very creepy. A nearly 50 year old man is somehow finding a lot of trauma bonds with somebody that isn't even old enough to legally drink. And it's not just me saying it, right? You've got a bunch of people in the comment sections to his own videos going, Boogie, I really do think you took advantage of her. She clearly has her own issues and it's sad because I've met people like her in my past life. I'm 29 years old and I know the signs of someone like her who only in her early 20s would date someone your age. We all know she didn't have a best life and you're just using it for your videos. It's disgusting. No, I don't think you care about her or try to help. If I were her actual friend, I would tell her to get the hell out of this weird situation and find someone who can really care about you and help you. 
And of course, if you look in the actual video that Boogie posts, by the way, on his own channel, it hey, gets Game downright Bash. depressing. So listen to this. Sorry, I'll, I'll repeat all that. What was the question? So if he cheated, I'm not going to break up with him because I love him and it's going to hurt. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. But I know at the end of the day, he loves me, so. Oh, well, that was the clip people were talking about. It would, it, it would, to see Terrible. him with, okay, to see Boogie with another woman, it would hurt and it would make me jealous, but I'd get it. What? Listen, ladies, if you ever feel that it's okay for a guy to cheat on you, get the fuck out of that relationship. Yep. Cheating is never okay. Yep. Simple as that. And that's one of the problems that uh, I think is with this girl, okay? She obviously is very, very, very young, and she's very much into this life with a person that is far more older, very, very unhealthy, and according to his own statements, is literally on the verge of dying. There's a point in the Mike Lum documentary where he sits down with the girl, explains his life situations, and basically, she starts crying down. Now, obviously, I think in some way, that's a little bit emotionally manipulative. It is. I really... Yeah want you to understand how actually sick I am. Yeah, we saw this part. Yeah, like I don't know if you actually get it, but this is my health summary. This is everything that's currently wrong with me. My risk for stroke or heart attack is astronomical. I am essentially a walking time bomb. And I'm so Fucking sorry for that. I really, really wish I had taken better care of my body. Yeah, I know. Obviously, how can you sit somebody down and talk about your life problems, your health issues, and uh, they start crying? How do you think they're gonna walk away? They obviously are with you because in their mind, they think you're on your fucking deathbed. And it's really shitty to leave somebody behind when they're literally dying. Okay, there is a lot of weird dynamics in this relationship yeah. that make me cringe, and most of the world can see. That. Oh, absolutely. Danny says this guilt trip would be one thing in private. It's a th it's ten thousand percent worse with the camera being brought into the situation. At the same time, also though, the camera being there in the first place just makes it seem like it's all the more constructed and fake. Um, but again. You can't know any of the truth with any of this. Who knows? It might be true that Boogie298 really is dating this 20-year-old and she really is just going to be shit out of luck and she really was feeling that way. But it also could have just been staged to get him more attention so that he can pay his fucking bills. How Boogie, the narcissist that he is, well, I guess that explains it, puts this video up and thinks that it makes him look in a good light is actually beyond me and baffling. Now to go back to the leaked conversations that I had with other YouTubers about this situation, I firmly stand by and believe this is creepy. Boogie's response to that is making it appear as if I made this a public matter of fact statement. I did not. In fact, if anything, I kept it pretty much quiet until Boogie decided to prod the bear in public and pretty much tell me that I was fabricating shit. So I basically say I didn't fabricate anything. I didn't talk about this. Other YouTubers asked me about this. They might have fabricated it, but that's on them. If somebody asks me what I think about your weird relationship, I'm gonna say it like any other person my age does. You're creepy, you're manipulative, you're weird. I don't think it's built on good intentions. What does Boogie do to prove that this girl that I don't even know is over the age of 18? He will literally send me her identification. Now, I find it so odd that Boogie is talking to a girl uh, and is with her, is in love with her, and just happens to have her ID on his phone. Add the fucking ready beck and call to send to some random over the internet. Do you not care about her safety? Do you not worry that, oh shit, I'm sending this uh, image to YouTubers who could maybe get hacked? I don't know. Their DMs could get leaked. And then, by nature, even her ID could get leaked. Why am I- Oh yeah, don't forget to press like on the stream sending this image to random people on the internet that I don't really know. It's fucking weird that he does this. And I feel bad for this girl because she lets it happen. It's just weird. It's really fucking weird. Now that's where I'm pretty much going to leave this girl ad. I don't really want to add more trauma into her life or bring her more up into a public respect, public spectacle like, like she already has. But I'm just pointing these things out because I, like most people, find it creepy. 
Now, to whittle on back to Boogie's contradictions, uh, one of the things in his expense sheet he listed, and this is, again, how you figure out a Boogie contradiction. He will constantly be a manipulative liar and change facts literally in minutes, seconds, hours, days, weeks. Inside this documentary, he mentions how much money he made on a fight he had with Wings of Redemption, uh, all the way out in London. Watch the way he hits my head. My brain got shocked with each one of those. It's ricocheting against my skull. So since you guys were here last, I did have a bit of a windfall, which bought me some time here in this house. Uh, the problem with that is I spent more than 10000 getting that fight together. So by the time all that was done, all I did was put that $10,000 back into savings. Now, for this fight, he was paid $10,000. I asked Keemstar, he said $11,000 because apparently they paid for his lab work to get sanctioned for the fight. Now, inside this list, he mentions boxing lessons around $1,500. Now... This is where it gets really wild. So listen to this. Walked into that thing knowing the only Dude, you were talking about you had button. boxing training and shit. I'm like, I can't afford boxing training. I'm going to have to fucking be out here under the shed. <laughs> yeah. My, you know what my boxing training was? I fought a drunk friend down in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Uh, apparently, he either paid $1,500 to his drunk friend to fight him in Dallas, Texas. Is that... I told you the whole fucking thing is a fraud. A documentarian, a documentarian would dig into that fucking claim and not just enable Boogie to fucking lie to the internet more. That's why I kept saying that was a fucking documentary. Hey, you. Goodness, so sorry. Ridiculous. Puff piece. Puff piece. Dump piece. Like I said, dump piece. Naomi Chance, thank you for becoming a member for the fourth month. Say thank you so much. $1,500 in boxing lessons? I don't know. What the fuck? But here, listen to this one real quick. Punch strength. My technique is terrible, but he's not working with a boxing trainer yeah. either, so I don't think either of us is going to have technique. Oh, sorry. What's Screen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He also doesn't have a trainer as well, too. See, these are little contradictions that one can pick up. Now, that contradiction came from my wife's podcast, uh, The Real Weird Sickos, where she invited Boogie to talk about this situation, amongst a whole litany of other things. And uh, this is where it gets really hilarious. Boogie is a guy that says, I'm over. I'm done with drama. And that video was posted, like, what, eight days, nine days ago? Uh, yeah, in reality, Boogie is not done with anything like it. Boogie uh, decides to basically keep mentioning me by name on his social media feeds, acting like I'm spreading weird rumors and whatnot. Now, my wife will defend me. She will just say, hey, your whole life is a walking set of contradictions. Now, I don't like to publicly engage with Boogie because he constantly says that I'm punching down, uh, even though uh, if you talk shit on the internet, you will definitely get hit. I actually DM'd him privately and told him, listen, if you don't want to make this a public thing, why are you constantly spreading up misinformation? Why are you just lying? Why are you just constantly being weird about this? And uh, Boogie decides to send me an entire list of words. And obviously I said in my piece, uh, I really just said, hey, listen, I don't really need to dredge anything up. Uh, and that's pretty much what it comes down to. I don't want to bother making a video. Uh, and I'm not really looking forward to it either, just because there's a whole lot of other things that I could cover. I am driving. Let me say, let me paint the scene here. I'm driving home from New York, okay? You got my wife with me. I got me. And uh, <laughs> I don't respond to anything. 20 minutes later, next to my phone, my wife's phone starts blowing up. And lo and behold, I see Boogie mentioned on here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this sends me into a bit of a rage because I find it so weird that the moment I don't respond to you, the next person you're hitting up is my wife about this situation. Obviously, it upsets me. It upsets her. It upsets people. We think it's weird, okay? Boogie crosses a personal boundary, and he decides to ask my wife, even mentions if I'm triggered or not. Yeah, I'm not triggered at you. I'm just triggered at the fact that you start reaching out to my friends and family. It's just a line you don't cross. Now, Boogie will claim that he doesn't know who my wife is. Like, oh, you just picked the random one account that is actually, like, uh, the, the spouse of the creator that you're mad at. You know, the person that has anniversary.
Trans girl Lily says, hey, Demon Mama, just got home from running an event at my university. I liked the YouTube stream and came over to site chat. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for all of that. I'm doing wonderfully. I hope you're doing well. Three photos of us on the internet. But also, funniest fact about it too, you were on her show. So this is why lying comes so naturally to this person too. He doesn't really care. He just lies about any fact. Facts that can be immediately, immediately countered. But of course, one of the wildest things about the end of this entire documentary is when he promotes drug usage. 47 minutes in to get out of this documentary, Mike records Boogie uh, at uh, this uh, shaman, weird as fuck by the way, he, the shaman gives him psychedelic mushrooms, and this is his way to, like, apparently reset his mind. Now, I'm just going to start off by saying that uh, drug usage is obviously not something anybody should be promoting. If you are going through a lot of mental and physical issues... Man. This... Is Muda religious? Like, let's be real here. Fucking shrooms are not fucking heroin, okay? This is, that's, this is silly. This is, this is silly. Don't do- Sounds like a, like a Christian or some other uh, restrictive religion type thing. Fucking drugs! If you are going through financial problems, don't do drugs, okay? Boogie- Mushrooms don't cost fucking jack shit, okay? They don't cost anything. I'm sorry. It's just, what the fuck? He is not being taken care of by anyone licensed in the medical field. He's just going into the well, forest true, and doing fucking drugs with randoms. And this, this, this is like having a weird meltdown over smoking a joint. It, it's very silly. This, this comes off as very silly. This is where, again, Boogie refuses to take life into his own hands. Instead of downsizing his financials, he decides, I'm just going to pick up an incredibly expensive hobby like mushrooms and go off with it. Mushrooms are not an expensive hobby. And also he didn't do the, I, I don't mean to defend Boogie here. He didn't do them as a hobby. He did one mushroom. That's not, that was, okay. I'm so sorry. This is so, this is, man, he's really losing the plot here. Well, Boogie. It doesn't work that way, son. And that's pretty much where we're going to end it at, okay? Yeah, real good message to end off on. Hey, your guys' life is all messed up? Try using some mushrooms. Hey, maybe combined with some therapy and some other pseudoscience crap, it could work. But ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much where I want to end it at. I know that I've been harsh in this video, and I probably could have been harsher, but honestly, Boogie is so, uh, I guess you could say, uh, is such a, it, Boogie is such a, I guess you could say, manipulative character that being mad over him is just not worth it, okay? I know that a lot of other creators are still getting mad over this day because Boogie refuses to do even the minor things to make his life better. The only thing that makes me angry in this situation is the manipulation he puts to his fans. Look, I'm just going to say it like it is. All right, that's, that's basic. We've got the gist now. Now we have the context necessary to understand this, which is the so the, well with the it is uh... explosive conflict between Boogie and Mudahar on Review Tech USA's stream, which is what we are going to be watching now. So this is Mudahar, who we were just watching, Bo and Boogie having a total throwdown over this video uh, on Review Tech USA's stream. So let's uh, let's let's jump into that. Uh, medical marijuana. And uh, so she's pretty consistently, if we have to go somewhere, if we have to do something, we have to film, she gets high first. And uh, boy, it's just, it's a wonder drug. It's a wonder drug. The difference between her on her medical marijuana and her not, it's holy f it's night and day. It's night and day. It's beautiful. It's, would, a wonder, I, it's a wonder drug. Yes, audience. I would let Muda on if Boogie would stay on. That's, I can't keep it. Yeah, I mean, if Muda wants to, is, is Muda around? Hi, Muda. Yeah, believe me, I I just want to let it be known. If he wants to come on, yeah. I am not stonewalling that. Yeah, if Mood is around, you know, he's welcome to do whatever he wants to do, man. Oh. I mean, at the end of the day, I said this on the Low Cal podcast. You'll have to wait to hear it there. But I said all my grievances with Muda. I, I have no grievances. And apparently, Muda said his grievances on a YouTube video tonight. And I guess hopefully we're in a good place after that. But I mean, as good as a place can be when a guy openly fucking hates you, you know. That guy openly fucking hates me, which... Honestly, I don't entirely blame him, you know. But you want to hear my point of view of it, you got to listen to the Low Cow Podcast. What? 
You, you say that, though, it, it sounds like you're disingenuous when you say that, to be honest with you. Oh, what do you mean? Like, you're angry that he is, had this video out about you. I could hear no, it. No, not at all. I knew it was coming. He even gave me a warning that it was coming. I, I, pretty obvious uh, last couple of conversations I had received that this was coming. zero contributions. Oh, and I, we obviously put That's a, a documentary out switch, there for people to react to. Me and Micah S said. Damn, tr Twitch moment. Yeah, if you want to react to it, watch the entire Italiano. thing. Watch it on your live you streams, watch it on your YouTube Tony videos, Chase. watch it, whatever you want to do. That's why it's out Dude, fucking turn off the turn off the auto voice during fucking interviews. Oh, dude. Not oh, ever. TTS. Oh. He is what happens when Alex I don't expect Jones anybody to have a good opinion. I'm surprised that people do have a good opinion. I admit it to some Stories really stupid for shit. days. We have he uh, Mudahar is here. He said, "I, uh, Muda, can I send you a link? I am." I am failing worse than Leafy did right now when he was trying to be a moderator because I'm stoned as hell. <laughs> and I don't dislike Muda. I just think that last bit was really fucking weird. The the fucking weird like dare. Don't do drugs, kids. Drugs are bad, okay? And then he's saying that like mushrooms are an expensive hobby. It's like I don't think there's a hobby. He did one mushroom in a in a weird thing. There's like a lot to make fun of. I mean, you guys just watch me. Unless you're watching this as a video, I w or you came in in one of the raids, at which point you should go check out my react to the documentary, which was fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun making fun of him doing one mushroom and then being like, my life is like a video game, trying hard to beat the stage. Um, but I just, I don't know why, I don't know what was with the weird, like, I don't, it was just weird. That's all. And... I, all right, I'll get you the invite. I am I am not equipped right now to handle this. I am just being honest. This is a f***ing shit show. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. But I feel like when... when uh, I'm trying to play Mario at the same time, so it's a little complicated. By the way, hold on. Let me do a little shout-outs on my stream. I am... I may need to f***ing call Jane. <laughs> Listen, holy... Hey. What's up, Lando Commandy? Lando Commandy? As I'm getting shirtless to be the professional that I am. Um, Bro, what? So you what you, you did not give All right, I'm speeding this up a, a heads bit. up, or Muda didn't give you a heads up, Boogie, because you blocked him, apparently. Yeah, wait, no, how, no, could you say, how could like, you say that I gave you a heads up? That doesn't make any sense. Because you've been mad at me for like a week. I knew it had to be coming. I'm not mad at you. I'm mean, just like disgusted no, to, with my to behavior. Be, to be mad thing. at you would mean that you would have to like matter to me, personally. Well, that's true. I don't okay. get mad at you. I That's can't right. have the time. It's just like I think you're a compulsive liar. Is sort of the. I, I respect that. I understand that. I've definitely been an unreliable witness. Uh, How can you say you're like you respect that? Like this is the thing that I don't get. Like you respect that somebody believes you're a compulsive liar. That's a very respectful. Just, that's very that's respectful. That's not respectful. Thing to have. The, that's not respectful. Like you should be learning to, to better yourself instead well, of just saying, am, oh that's respectful. What are you doing? What I'm saying yourself? is I have lied in, in the past. I'm doing my best to not lie. That's but you literally like you, okay. So you've lied in the past. What have you done very recently? Because like in the last few months. You've literally like blatantly lied. Like that whole boxing fight thing. It's funny because catching you in a lie is the easiest thing. What is the, what the, is the what lie world. about the boxing fight? Then? You said that you had fifteen hundred dollars in boxing, like uh, to pay for a boxing. Oh no, lessons. Mike Clum. Uh, Mike Clum said on my live stream he fudged those numbers. He fudged those numbers. He didn't get those numbers from me. He'll openly. Oh, dude! It is all fucking made up. It is all. F I fucking called it. I fucking called this at the beginning. Let the record show that once again, my third eye was open and I called that it was all a bunch of fucking bullshit. And this is the problem with trying to pretend like this shit is some kind of documentary. This is the problem with, with this kind of bullshit. I tell you. And, and so, so hold on, you watched this documentary before it came out in its entirety and we're okay with that then? I didn't pay attention to the numbers like most of the text. Like, for example, he said that I was on a drug that I'm not on. Apparently one of the drugs he wrote the name of, he, I'm on like a muscle relaxer called bupropen or something like that. Mm -hmm. He wrote like bupropazine, which is a drug people take to recover from uh, opiate addiction. Oh, thank you, baby. That's so now, so now, now you're implying that the documenter that you worked with is a liar? So no, that, that brings up his... No, that I'm brings his saying, entirety into that brings his entire like integrity. You literally, he literally, Boogie just said two seconds ago that he made it up. He did. He did just accuse the documentarian of being a liar. Yes, he did. And the future yeah. of his channel. No, I'm question. just saying. I'm just saying that he made a couple mistakes when it came to the numbers, and he came made a couple mistakes so when it came to that, the text. So before that, before that documentary came out, why didn't you call him up and say, "Hey, can you fix that mistake? It's pretty fucked up." Because I didn't. Because it, it is pretty fucked up. I didn't. I didn't really read any of the text. It's not something I was. A lot of important. attention. We watched it together on. And, and, and the funniest thing is, it's not even the text, by the way, too. You said it in the documentary. You talked about the boxing training, didn't you? Oh, no, I know. I did spend 
I did spend more money than I got paid. It's just not that particular way. I could break it down for if you want to know. Okay, but but in that clip, Rich, can you can you put that clip on again where he's discussing his like boxing match, like his his the ten thousand dollars and like all the expenses he got? Yeah, We're all right. here, so we might as well just watch it together. Yeah. Where do you, where do you know the point? It's in your video. Also, um, you, do you still have? Thirty something thousand in crypto right now. That's no, um, I did at the beginning of the year. I've got about well, crypto's up right now, so I'm up to about nine. But about last week, I had about six point seven. I got about. I don't understand why you don't cash that out. Uh, because you only take the loss when you sell it, and like I, I guess the six thousand dollars could disappear tomorrow, but that's not really going to make or break me. But if it goes up, I could definitely use the money. You know, if it goes down a thousand, it's probably not going to make a huge, huge difference. But do you understand how up, wild that is? Like you're complaining about money, and how yeah. much is it worth right now in asset wise? Like according to your app, about nine thousand or so. So nine thousand dollars, right? I cash it How out much as is I your mortgage? It. I cash it out yeah. as I need it. So at the beginning of December, I'll pull out two thousand and pay my mortgage. It's like a savings like, account. I just treat it like a savings account. Except this savings account makes me money sometimes. It's what? not a savings account because it's literally the most negatively volatile asset you have. I don't know. It's held really steady for the last two years. Uh, yeah, because it lost ninety nine percent of its fucking value. Right. So, so how low can it go? Yeah. Like, exactly. What do you mean? That's why yeah. I leave it in there. How low can it go? That's exactly yeah, my why, point. Why wouldn't you put that in? Take that money out and maybe put it into like index funds or like move that shit around. Well, no, I'm going to need it in the next 60 days, roughly. So um, here's what I don't understand. You have $750,000, and you just decide to put all of it into crypto when that money could have went into No, no, I did not have $750,000. I had $250,000. That's what... Dude, dude, you, he said he had $750,000. Oh, man, this guy's so full of shit. This is all shit. This is all a fucking... All of this is a fucking PR stunt to try and reboot his career. Literally, the documentary that you were on... I understand. Said, that's the most that I either? had was $700,000. When I initially invested in crypto, I had two hundred fifty thousand. So why did why did you let him write you lost six hundred thousand dollars in crypto? Because that's about how much I lost. It, it, my max amount was about seven hundred thousand, and so if I sold that day, I would have had seven hundred thousand. The math doesn't make sense. The well, math, math should make sense. make sense. Well, let me walk you through it. Okay. Now let's imagine you have a quarter million dollars. Okay, which sure, is what yeah. I had. Now you invest yeah. it. Okay. Now it goes up to eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Now if you sold it, then how much money would we have? Eight hundred thousand dollars, right? But I didn't. I sold it when it was considerably less than that. So, so you're telling me you, you put quarter million in, you made like 750,000. That was your peak, right? Like the yep. asset that was valued. Yep. So why the f wouldn't you cash it out then? Or are you just like greedy? Was it literally like a gamble? Like you, it literally it sounds was, like you're playing fucking roulette. I went to, I mean, it was kind of like gambling, honestly, but uh, I went to bed one night. I was invested yeah, in a small shit coin mm -hmm. called, it was either uni or I don't know. Michael Green could tell you the other one, but one of them was uni. One of them was, I don't know, but I went to bed and it lost 60% value overnight. I woke up the next morning and I sold what I had, but uh, that didn't really matter because I'd, I'd lost. I went from about 700000 back down to about 200000 I mean, that, this is like, this is just, I, I don't even like really. Wait, like... that means you broke even. Wait, that means he broke even. That means he didn't lose. If he, if it, if he, if he gained and he, then it lost 60% of its value. And, but wait a minute, he's still lying. Hold on a second. He's still fucking lying because he said that he made double his, his money that he invested on Bitcoin. This is different. This is a shit coin that he's talking about. But on Bitcoin, he already stated that he made double his, his investment. He's fucking bullshitting. He's fucking bullshitting. All of it is fucking dishonest. The entire documentary is a fucking fraud. Bullshit. It's fiction. First off, the math is incredibly uh, weird. I feel like what's, we'd probably what's weird about just, that? We'd probably like thousand doubles, and then mm -hmm. and adds another sixty percent. It goes from two hundred fifty thousand to seven hundred thousand. And mm -hmm. then I went to bed, and the asset lost eighty percent, ninety percent. You know what a market crash is, I'm sure. And so the market crashed, and you know how your stocks are worth a certain amount at one point, and they're worth a different than another. So I woke up the next day. Yeah, I know how the stock amount. market works. You're in the crypto market. This is a yeah. completely degenerate operation. But yes. Well, I understand. You know, I, I so after never, I you got so so hold on, you put in two hundred fifty thousand. You got up to seven fifty. How much did it drop to? Uh, about two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand over. And you didn't decide maybe I should cash out then. No, you let it go all the way down to thirty after that. Well, I did. I did cash out then. Uh, so but you cashed you out two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. What do you think I've lived off of since two thousand or two thousand twenty? I've had to live off so, something. So what was Mike showing in his documentary where you had thirty thousand in assets still remaining that, in a crypto account? Well, I put it back into Ethereum, which is a really safe investment. Ethereum and Bitcoin are really safe no, investments it's not, once right. they're at the bottom of the market. Jesus Christ. Bitcoin and Ethereum are I safe mean, investments. So now you had so now you had two hundred thousand dollars. You couldn't put any of that money into like the index, the S P five hundred, when you know, literally buy the average of a tech stock and like let that raise year after year. I mean, this isn't financial advice, by the way, but right, most yeah. financial no, advice is that, no, I could that. have, and that obviously would have been the smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you could have put it into the house because that's clearly a very safe appreciating asset. Yeah, one of the things I really regret. I mean, at this at this point, and I'm very lucky, and I've been open about this. This house says it's worth probably, and point people pointed this out after the doc. 
uh, I wasn't aware of this, but this house's value is closer to like four hundred fifty thousand. I paid two fifty. I owe about one fifty on it. So theoretically, it, it, after closing costs, I could the math. The math that you just told me makes it sound like you put in uh, a value of money into cryptocurrency, it raised, and then you lost, but you cashed out roughly around the same value you put in. So it doesn't really little, sound like you lost uh, six hundred thousand dollars in crypto, then, right? It just sounds like you're so gambling. Again, again, uh, oh. he's fucking live bullshitting. Boogie two ninety eight is so full of shit. I would not be surprised if he's sitting pretty on plenty of money still, and that all of this is just a scam to get even more money by playing a character on the internet because he's tired of being irrelevant and only making two thousand dollars. He wants more money. So what's also what's the valuation of your house right now, Boogie? Well, like I just said, I I've got about one hundred fifty thousand dollars left on the debt, and it looks like that I could sell it. Zillow tells me I could sell it for four hundred fifty thousand. So it looks I mean, like forget Zillow for a second. Have you talked to a realtor or something too? I, this no, is the thing not, about like the video. Yet. This is the thing about the video. Why don't you like again? Why wouldn't he do that immediately? If he has, if he has, uh, if if he paid two hundred thousand for it and could make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars right now on his house just by selling it and moving to a slightly different house, it would alleviate all of his financial troubles and leave him with money to spare that he could get back onto his feet with insane he's a fraud 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 all of it is fucking bullshit and maybe there's like a sentimental thing to this house but like if you can't afford the home why don't you downsize to like an apartment or like a smaller property well something? unfortunately if i want to stay near my doctors and i want to stay near my medical centers uh i need to stay in northwest arkansas and northwest arkansas doesn't have any like apartments they, they do. you can get apartments here for as cheap as 900 to a thousand but then okay. I would have to kick out one of my roommates who's very close and dear to me. We've lived together for 25 years. He's my best friend. He's like a brother to me. I don't want to lose him. So then we're going to have to pay more for a second bedroom. Um, and, and So again, why, why, does, why don't you and him split the rent with each other? I don't talk about that. He's, he's got his personal life. and his, uh, he's, yeah. he's, Other than just uh, he's got his personal issues. And I mean, issues. but it sounds like, it sounds like you, you feel like you want to support this person and it's great and all, but you can't afford to but keep you yourself afloat. And you can't, so how can, you be a, how can you add on a dependent is the thing, right? That's a big problem. I mean, at the end of the day, he does bring in, again, his life is personal. Let's leave his life personal. It's very important to me. It's very important to him that his life is personal. But, but to it's say, part of you. But it's, it's part a, of it's your a null sum, it's a, discussing it's a, right now. He's currently a null sum game. I don't spend any money on him, uh, and so you don't need to worry about it. If I had to move into a smaller apartment, though, I might have to and have to work something out. But if we can keep this house to 2100 instead of paying 1100 somewhere around here, uh, I think it's nice to build equity rather than just give it all to a landlord. And also, renting in Arkansas sucks. You guys may not be aware of this, but landlord... Renting uh, anywhere sucks. Yeah, but especially in Arkansas. In fact, you can Google this. It is the worst state yeah, but, but, in the but nation. But just think run. about it like this, okay? You, you, how much is your current like home mortgage? Twenty two hundred. Twenty one hundred. Yeah. 2100? Mm -hmm. Okay, so twenty one hundred dollars versus like nine hundred dollars. That is slashing your like uh, that. That is slashing your housing costs right. by at least and, fifty percent. And, and if, if and when the time comes, that's obviously mm -hmm. something I'll do. But I'd rather. But, just but try here's to the thing: if you more, I'd rather you, try to make. Yeah, yeah. I, I think David Lynch talked about this. Bullshit. That's how I feel. Total. Fucking bullshit. True. Make more YouTube videos. I if you don't do it now, then you don't really have an option. You don't have that leeway in the future. That's the thing, right? Like this is like somebody who has two hundred thousand dollars in the bank and no income, and they want to be adamant in living in their mansion in Los Angeles. Yeah, you can do that for like four or five months, but when that time comes to downsize, you know, you well, I've had your this options long... to downsize are, are incredibly like difficult boy. because you have no. You okay, know, so, what you, to deal with. so you may not know a lot about this, but uh, the audience might not know about it, but I've learned about it in a lot. I've mm -hmm. had this loan for a long time. And so right. when, you are, point, when, you have a, when you have a loan, you're building equity, and it's a 15-year loan. So a huge chunk of what I'm putting into the mortgage is mine to keep. And so once, once you sit down and do the math, it's way less of a savings than you're thinking. Uh, so if I can keep this house and keep building equity, it's my money to keep. Okay, but how much is your house's value raising your... XLR, thank you so much for the gifted tier two sub. Deeply appreciate that. And indeed, ditch that white name and be green instead. The greenification has begun. Thank you. After year, though, you live in Arkansas. It's not Los Angeles. Uh, it, I mean, like it, went from, it went from 275 when I bought it in 2015 to 450 now. Uh, Northwest Arkansas is popping off. It's, we have the home of Walmart. We have the home of Tyson. We have the home of J.B. Hunt, three of the largest companies in the world. Uh, there's 2,000 small businesses that want to deal business with Walmart that have to keep an office open in Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Tyson just moved uh, six, I think, I don't remember the number. I'm not going to quote it because I don't want to be wrong, but it's like several hundreds of jobs to Northwest okay, Arkansas, which so caused a huge what? spike. And a huge chunk of my money goes directly into equity because this loan is so matured at this point. So I, I, at the end of the day, I would rather keep the home as best I could, take care of the people that I can take care of, keep building equity 
And I honestly think it puts me in a tightrope situation where it makes me stream more. It makes me make more YouTube videos. It makes me try harder. See, I, I don't really see that. You've been on a tightrope situation for the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, it's never been this tight. <laughs> This is as tight as it gets, you know? And, and see, this is the thing, like, yeah, sure. It's no, no, not even close. This is not as tight as it gets, dude. You clearly have money that you're sitting on. You literally admitted you have somewhere between, uh, he said that he just admitted in this video that he put 30,000 that's currently sitting in, in Ethereum. So he, he accidentally like told on himself there. This guy is a total fraud, total fraud. Cool, but like, how can you ever expect anybody to feel bad for that? He just said that his house is, he could make $250,000 on his house right now. His situation is not tight at all. It's fucking fine. It sounds like you just gave away the money and that's what it is. You do, know? Do, right. If you look at this, you, at this documentary we made, does mm -hmm. that look like a documentary that was designed to make somebody feel bad for me? Of course not. It's not, it, it honestly, it felt like that was the intention, but because you're no, somebody that not. I believe you, obviously no, it's, it, it looks like that from its intention. I mean, do you not understand how bad this documentary makes you look when you were out? That's that my point. That's interview? exactly my point. Yeah. Cause when you were out trying to get a new sub, you know, I'm going to go like this. When you were out trying to get a job, when you were out trying to find this job or whatever, right. like what happened with that? Like, why did you absolutely throw away that opportunity? Like, so we went in, you took we a dump in, all over that. We, we went into the job interview. Uh, mm -hmm. That is not a job interview. It's a staffing agency. To be okay, prepared. exactly. You're doing a marketing. Yeah, hold on. Cool. Exactly. Hold on. It's it's a joke. Like a, it's a staffing ag agency. I fucking knew it. Like I said, it's he, he was full of shit. With he, he, it, that, that's that's a fucking bit. The idea that a YouTube, that a guy with YouTube experience, 17 years of YouTube experience, would go to a fucking staffing agency where you'd be overqualified for anything anyway, that's fucking, it's a joke. This whole thing has been a fucking constructed joke. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Also, Windleby, thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very, very much for the gifted two tier, t tier one subs. Uh, which says this message automatically automatically targets white names. You have been freed. Excellent. Look at that. So Thank it's you a so staffing much. agency, and you we talked be a little bit beforehand. You got to be staffable, right. though. Right. We <laughs> talked a little bit beforehand and made it abundantly clear that there was not anything this company was going to be able to do for me. See, I can talk. So uh, we decided to. I decided to have fun with it, and I just went into my Andy Kaufman mode, tried to have fun with it, and that's what we put into the doc. And the extended scene, I hope, shows that very clearly. But walking into that staffing agency in the first five minutes, we knew there's nothing this company could do for me. So why not have fun with it? I also did the same thing. Is that, uh, is that like the attitude you have when you walk into anything that could change your life? It's like, this couldn't happen. There's nothing to do it. I, well, no, like, once they tell me that it can't, then sure, yeah. Once they tell me that. No, we're no not in that video, it. like, she pretty much said, hey, if you have the mentality of I can't, I can't, I can't, then you won't. And she was right. Right, but that's after she told me. It was after we were abundantly clear there's nothing this company would be able to do for me. So, so you walk into an interview and you tell them, okay, listen, this is all the negative things about me. By the way, if you look up me on the internet, I, there, you might hear me beat my wife or I'm a all this shit right, it's like yeah, you know, yeah. like that's gonna like that is that right. i would never have done that i would have never done that if there was a chance that i could get a job there obviously okay obviously. what about the time when meta pcs offered you a job why didn't you take that because that was a bit how does people not realize that was just a bit he never offered that was a, a job. Bit? i i'm a I'm, I'm one of their affiliates man we were trying to sell pcs you you, you guys have to know that right like <sighs> ask like zach that. Ask zach that was never an offer zach will confirm that i don't even know what the, f the bit was so i can't I get, yeah it's like it's like these in H3's interview with Clum, he even says that it's a basically a prank on the agency. Maybe we'll react to that um, at a later point. These are like some insanely like bits that just fly over everyone's head for some reason. It's kind of cute. I, like what the? F I, don't know. I, don't I, know. I, I haven't seen it. It could very yeah. well be a bit. I'm not. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. Which is why I respect the opinion that people think I'm a compulsive liar because sometimes this stuff is. Because Zach wasn't actually offering a job. We were trying to sell some PCs. I wasn't actually getting offered a job that day. If I did, I would have taken it very seriously. But we knew there was no job to be had here, so I decided to Andy Kaufman a little bit. Why not? Have this is what I wanted to bring up. Classy Tech actually brought up a very good point. You realize the bubble, the housing bubble could burst, right? And what happens if it bursts? Then your housing price is worth less than you actually... Right, but like I said, if I sell tomorrow, I clear up $200,000, $225,000 after repairs, closing costs, new carpets, new paint, all this stuff. Um, and I, I do need that money. I'd love to have it. Uh, where do I go? You downsize into like an apartment or something, man. Like, yes, I dude, another house anywhere? Who fucking cares? What are you talking about, bro? Small, no, like small said, yeah, like a condominium, exactly. That's a two bedroom own. condominium. That's but not going to be too much. But if you look in Northwest Arkansas, there's not a lot of options. Yeah, by the way, just, just so we're clear, uh, this just proves all of this context proves that the, the documentary is a total fucking fake. That it's not even, that calling it a documentary is actively dishonest. It's not. It's not just a misleading documentary, but he's admitting here that they just made shit up and completely misrepresented it. Insane. Insane. Genuinely insane. Uh, in, in, a, in a price range that makes a lot of sense. We sat down 
I, I know you guys. It don't just sounds I, like you. I, hold on, to, I, hold yeah, on, hold on. I know you guys don't believe I have friends, mm-hmm. but I sat down I with my CPA. You. Who said that? A lot of people. Like uh, people, every time I mention I have a friend who has a job, they're like, "You don't have a friend." Uh, but who like, says I, that? I don't say that. But I like I had a friend that, in no. PR, and they're like, "You don't have a friend in PR." I have a friend who works for the feds. You don't have a friend that has a fed. So when cool, I tell okay. you, I know we're not those people. So I believe you have a friend. I do have a CPA friend who's been helping with some tax shit, and we sat down one day, and we've discussed a bunch of different things. The most promising thing, and this is something I don't want to do, and I talked about this when Tom was here. Um, he wants me to get on a disability trust because I am disabled. I've been disabled since 2007 and I can draw benefits. The problem is we'd have to take all my existing assets, put it into a trust, and then I could get back on Medicare and have health insurance again. So that's something we're considering doing. Um, but on top of that, we've sat down and we've crunched the numbers and we've not found a lot of things that make a lot of sense other so, than just so get I, back to I also, here. I also crunched the numbers too, because I like to research these situations and get down to the bottom of it with Tom. Actually, you said that your best earning month on YouTube was 30 grand. With sponsors? Yeah, yeah. So how, explain to me real quickly. So in 2000, and I think it was 18 or 19, sure. whatever, when you made half a million, 498,000 US dollars specifically, even if you, you know, multiply 30 by 12, which is like some real utopian ass accounting, that's still sure. not even coming close to clearing 498,000. So like, what is up with these weird discrepancies in like income? Like that's, that's, that's at least $110,000 discrepancies. What I don't know, man. There? Like if you need to see my taxes, I'll, I'll, I've got them all on my hard drive. You can see them. Uh, I don't know. I mean, then, a lot of times when I quote numbers, like, but you, what the well, like this admittedly, like, what, a lot of times when I quote numbers, I'm not expecting that level of cr- scrutiny. But you're welcome to see them if you need to. Mula. But it's a documentary. Dude. Yeah, it's like this is a documentary that you. Well, want wait, wait. To, like, so I thought you were talking, talking about. A, I thought you were talking about a conversation with Tom. Yeah, yeah with Tom. Somewhere, you see, with Turkey somewhere Tom. in the documentary, say I made thirty thousand dollars. Yes, with Turkey Tom. A couple months ago, five months ago, you said that your best earning month was thirty thousand with sponsors. In the actual documentary, it might have been closer to thirty-two. It might have been closer to thirty-five. I don't know. Thirty-two and thirty-five isn't going to fucking dramatically give you one hundred and ten thousand extra like shortfall. So the numbers are so odd. Nothing in your math actually adds up. Like half a million in one year, and then there's tweets of you saying I paid one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in like taxes or something too. So it's like, well, I did. If you if you want to see these numbers, it will bring you peace of mind. I'll just send you everything. I don't give a shit. I'm not your accountant. Like I'm not the IRS. Saying like if if it's that important to you, if it's that important, I'll show you the numbers. I think the truth is important, right? Like I think being factual. I think when you have a well, fan I ball, base, because like I one of my it might have been thirty-five. You, it might one have of been my issues with you is, I don't this, know. is this guilt? Is, is this guilt tripping you due to your fan base? What especially when it comes to money. Right now? Especially when it comes to money, it's like I'm about Did to lose I made my that mistake about, last year, and I haven't no, mentioned it since. Let me, let me explain. It when it comes to money, you're always yeah. telling your fans, "I wish I could do better. I wish you know, like I wasn't on my dire straits." And now when we're looking at your revenues and you're talking about your earnings, there's such a discrepancy there. So am I supposed to believe that? I can fix these discrepancies for you. I'll set you down, and you can see them. Am I supposed to believe that you're at your financial wits or maybe you have more money than you let on? Because nobody has any idea. You're not giving factual numbers. I literally and then, posted. And then you get a little bit posted. angry. You get a little lit- Good night, XLR. Thanks for supporting the show. And I hope you have a wonderful night. I literally with me posted, when you tell me shit about this. I literally and I'm telling you right posted, now, these discrepancies are not something I, I like literally to posted my bank account sure. info and my crypto info in the local chat. You can see how much money I have. I'm not Unless in the local think, chat. You were when I posted it last week. Do uh, you think I looked through every single thing on there? Like, I'm not even a paid member of the local well, podcast. Well, you what I'm saying is, it? If, if you're still in it, you can go look right now. I'm not in Unless it. you think I have, like, a stack of cash laying around, that's everything. I'm not in that right now, nor do I see your tax information, nor do I need to see it. I just need to explain. Bullshit. I need you to tell me for a man who's watched this documentary before its release and you stood by it. How could yeah. you stand by such glaring discrepancies? They weren't that important to me, and I forget how. Important so you're telling me the exact amount of money you make when that's such a big part of your like complaining. Oh, like this whole complaint. thing, yeah. yeah. Well, I know how much money I made. I don't care what you guys know or think. I, that's not that important to me. I don't. So you- what you just said you were gonna send them your shit. What are you fucking talking about? This is actual insanity. What we're witnessing right now is just live gaslighting. He's just making. It, it's this is this is crazy making. That's what is going on right now. This is just straight up crazy making. He's just saying absurd things to dodge people and make people feel like they're ta- they're being crazy, that they're that they're crazy when they're engaging with them. It's insane. You're willing, so you're willing to give us false information when we try correcting yeah, you on it. You it's get a documentary. Snippy? Well, uh, again, like I said, you you got to take that up with Mike. Unfortunately, he he ballparked the numbers. Wait, wait, you gave the information. You were the one who said No, I didn't give, no, did not give him that information. I did not. What do you mean? He had access. You were the one talking about this with he, him. You, you were... This is just a direct contradiction. He explicitly says that he gave the documentarian all access to the finance. This is so full of shit. So f- all of it is shit. Nothing in that documentary is trustworthy. Not one thing. Listen to me, imps. You hear me? 
what we've discovered here is a is a is an important lesson, which is that documentaries that are made by random assholes on YouTube that have glaring and obvious credibility issues can't be trusted for anything. None of the claims of that documentary are trustworthy at this point. The entire every every claim has crumbled under scrutiny, which means the entire thing is at risk. Jesus Christ. In your tub, showing him your bank account. Hold on, you were hold there. on a second. Hold on a second. Okay. Let me call Mike. Let's get him in. I, I guess Mike is like the biggest liar then, right? No, like, he's like, not. Holy shit. He's just, again, well, he's not Mike used to the level, level of insane scrutiny more... that you guys feel you need to have. I guess Mike must like uh, but absolutely... It's... What the f if anyone, But if anyone else made a documentary like this that had discrepant, big financial discrepancies, they'd be... Yeah, you'd be f***ing mad. You'd be yelling at us. You'd be like, we're no, I wouldn't. I'm so used to you being wrong about me. I'm numb to it at this point. How am I wrong about you? I, don't, I called I, about I, these discrepancies. That's what I'm, I'm talking asking about you. in the past, man. And, uh, how I have I been wrong in the past? Please explain exactly how I've been wrong in the past. My 18 year old girlfriend's like, start when she's not 18. That's I never made a start. public statement. You by tweeted the way. that never. last week. You tweeted that last tweet about? week. When did I tweet? What you did said I tweet you're exactly? telling people she's 18. I never uh, fucking no, did. No, because I never did. Was the one that talked about it in that leak. No, but you tweeted it. It's on your feed right now. You tweeted it. When you tell people your girlfriend is 18, when you tell people, I never did. I never. Holy shit. Shit. That's did. what he told us. I so never did. did. But I did told us. But you are factually incorrect. Did I, I make never that, did. Did, I, did I did I speak about that publicly until you made yes, it? Yes, it's on your Twitter feed. Yeah, I quote tweeted you. Yeah. Because you were bringing no, it you up didn't. publicly. Yes, no, I did. you didn't. That was a yes, something that was a completely separate yes, tweet. You were the one that brought it up. The I point that I'm making is you are still so you're lying right now. The point that I'm making is you're still there. I never still I have her ID in my wallet. I, I know how old she is. is. You literally just she's lied not, she's so 20 hard. years old. And now you're so how mad that you got caught in this lie. It's because not a lie. It's on your Twitter feed right now. Go check your Twitter feed right now. Go check your Twitter feed right now. It's on there right now. It's on there right now. It's on there right now. Go look at your Twitter feed. It's on there right now. I ain't lying to nobody. It's on there right now. Go look at it. It's not there. I'm not lying about anything. It's on there yeah, you said I'm it looking at it you're the i quote you said it you said it. that i said that and i never did quote i never did i never did i never did you did i never did i got a i never did i never did i never did but you said i did that's you being wrong about me 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 oh what how's it feel muda how's it feel muda how's it feel muda to be caught in the lie how's it feel muda for you to calm down i guess jesus christ and then I can deconstruct exactly how you're wrong. I how am I wrong? You. Did you tweet that I, I said that she was 18? Yes, I did. I quote I never tweeted, did. No, I never I did. I never did. The, I never did, did though. I've 50, never said 50, it. 50 year old I've man never said it. I've never said it. I've never said it. 50 year old man, dude. Jesus Christ. I've never said it. Whew, I never <sighs> will say it because she's not. She never was 18 when I knew her. Yeah, so I quote tweeted the fact that you were talking about me in some group chat. How long were you talking to her for? Uh, we just celebrated a one-year anniversary today. We officially started talking mm -hmm. uh, November 10th, last November year. November 10th of what year? Last year. One, one okay. year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which would have made her 19 at the time. We started dating when she was uh, 20, when she turned 20 in March. By and uh, way, we've met for the first time in June. Real quick, hold on. I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. So, Mudahar said I uh, that he was quote-tweeting and technically, it's a reply to a quote tweet, but I think he was being fairly honest here. He said, when you tell people a girl you met just turned 18, it creeps us all out. You're a gross womanizing slob that deserves all the shit you've, sh you've sown in life. The only claim that Mudahar ever made was that Boogie said that at some point. Creators asked you about your weird relationship when you publicized it, and we all thought it was creepy. Mudahar is saying that at some point Boogie must have either made a comment or a joke. Now, whether that part's true, we can't verify, but Mudahar was telling the truth that he was quote tweeting Boogie here. This, you know, you know character limits are a thing. I don't, I don't think that Mudahar was lying here. Boogie's just full of shit. And, and she legal, legal is legal, and that's all that matters to me, but you don't think. No, I mean, it matters to me. I wouldn't want to date an 18 year old. You know, Why? But... Don't you think that's like kind of dumping your trauma on her? I mean, I mean, no. he doesn't care. <laughs> he I was mean, sitting no. there telling her every single health issue that he had, and she started to cry in front of him. What do you think I she's believe, gonna go through? So this is my belief. I believe, and you might disagree, but I believe that if someone is going to be in your life, they need to be informed. Mm. And, and so I want to make sure that she fully remind them that you're basically at death's door. 
I oh, yeah, that's really I good, wanted huh? to set her down and make sure she fully understood what she was walking into. What do you think her reaction was going to be? What do you think? Amanda on a on a documentary, bullshit, dude. On a doc on camera for a documentary, bullshit. This is bullshit. Total bullshit. Well, person is going to get up and run away, or do you think they're going to get you know forcibly attached to you because shit? I'm a real bad person if I run I mean, away when this got person's a, she's dying. Got a, she's got a pr great mm -hmm. place to go. I don't know if you're aware of this, but do you know that one of the biggest causes of divorce is people getting uh, sick? Did you know that? Did you yeah, know that yes, people have yes. cancer? Their significant others leave them very frequently. Did you know that? Yeah, so yes, yeah, the, we, we know this. The, the, one of the most. Hey, Curie, why does the text on the screen still say the title of the documentary instead of the video that we're watching? Uh, because I think it's all connected to the documentary, and most of my commentary is tying back to the documentary. That's the only reason why. Common responses to someone being as sick as I am would be to leave. She chose yeah, to but stay, she's psych awesome. Yeah, but she's psychologically damaged, though. Yeah. I, I That's mean, got she's got daddy issues. So I mean, hard. shit. She even sat there and was like, if you cheat on her, you're good. she'll still let it go because you're a YouTuber. Yeah, we had a, we had like a really a good moment. Response, we had a really good moment on the live stream the other night, and she mm -hmm. came in there. I'm like, baby, if I ever cheat on you, you got to promise me you'll cut my dick off. And she's like, of course. <laughs> you know, she's, she's got social anxiety. She's like me. She says silly shit sometimes when the pressure's on. It's really yeah, hard. Yeah, but I, I'd, even, I'd even realize that for her to say that she would still be with you if you cheated, like, it's just... It's the fella, thank you so very much for the tier one sub. I can't forgive anyone who's this much of a dick to Muda, says Fafella. I can understand that. This is pretty dickish behavior. He immediately regretted saying it, like we talked about it that night. And obviously uh, yeah, but then. Freudian That's... slips are Freudian slips. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it just doesn't seem healthy. Yeah, I get that. At the end of the day, she's got loving parents that will take care of her. And uh, when she's ready to go, she can go. And uh, I'll be glad to help her. Uh, you know, I Kevin Maxwell Swift Smith with the $5 super chat. Deeply appreciate that. Somehow this dude lost worse than the market, went on to win bigger than the market, and is still broke. My guy has some fucking skills. True! It's almost like it's all bullshit. He's just making it up, and he's probably sitting on a fat load of cash because he's been making more money than he's ever been telling people, but he only knows how to manipulate people by lying to them and pretending to his audience that he's that he's in desperate straits. It's, he's, he's milking his own audience. And always has been, even though his audience has dwindled as people lose, uh, as people fucking burn out on that shit. At when she's day, ready to go, she can go. What are you waiting for her to leave? No, I'm saying if that's something she decides she wants to do, she's going to do it. I'll you don't think it, you're, you don't think you're necessarily being selfish, taking away these years from her life. I think that she is an adult. I think that she has agency. I think that she knows that she has multiple places that she could be. She mm -hmm. knows that she's got plenty of people that would pursue her. She's got a loving family that would take care of her. That miss her very much. We're going to go have Thanksgiving with in a couple of weeks. Um, and she knows that she has options. If she chooses to be here, then she has every choice to be here. And I'm going to make it an awesome time the whole time she's here. Uh, we have a good time. We watch her shows. We, we play our games. Uh, we, we take what little time together we can. And she's happy and I'm happy. And if she's ever not happy, I fully expect mm -hmm. her to tell me so we can solve the problem. Simple. Hey, Rich, I'm going to send you um, I'm going to send you something in the chat. You think you can put it in the on the stream? I can't this see the, that. This okay, is the, uh, this show is the me, uh, old tweet. Is? This is the actual tweet that um, Boogie is uh, saying that I mentioned about him. Eighteen. I want you to tell me who I'm quote tweeting in this. Who started this uh, contract? Who started this uh, first? Please. What, are you read, that? read the tweet. Read the tweet. Zoom, to us. Or are you I sent it, it to you in the Zoom meeting chat. Yeah. Read the tweet okay. to us, please. Yes. Read the tweet it. exactly. And I sent you an image as well too that shows you the deleted tweet from the individual I quote tweeted. Just tell me who that individual is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna say I didn't start the conversation. No, 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 no. Shut the shut the. You okay, started. Right. You you were literally hiding that. You were you were screaming like a baby. I'll I'll keep screaming at the baby. You said that she was. I said that she was eighteen. Right, so there is that. Valhalla Vidya says, "Why exactly is this being covered? This seems like niche YouTube drama. Um, it's not really niche YouTube drama. It's uh, some of the biggest YouTubers have commented on this, and also the documentary." quote unquote, did incredibly well. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is because first of all, um, I used to be a fan of Boogie myself. A lot of people in my audience used to be fans of Boogie. Um, Boogie has been a serial manipulator and this documentary is enabling him. And I think it's important to be able to call out, analyze and deconstruct manipulative things that are pretending to be documentaries. A documentary is supposed to be a work of non-fiction. It's supposed to be something that uh, presents a truthful, to some degree, uh, a view of the world. And that is not what's happened here. What we've now seen, of course, is that this documentary is fiction. It's all made up. It's all made up with the purpose of enabling a um, a, you, a, a formerly beloved YouTuber to further rip people off and manipulate people in his audience. There's your answer. I, I, I can't. How do I see not, it? Can I, is there a way to see it? In hold the, on. The I'm going to get that too. I'm going to get that too. 
<laughs> Sorry to do this to you when you're high, man. It's okay. I, 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 I was just gonna play with the tape deck like a nice little middle-aged man tonight, and here I am. Yeah, who's who am I? Who am I responding to there, Rich? Uh, who started yeah. this? What yeah, did you are. say though? Isn't that important too? It's all right there. Y'all yeah. expect me to go wild about these Keemstar Muda leaks where they shit talk me. I wouldn't have expected anything else from that type of group or chat. Uh, Mudahar quote tweets, but I didn't privately shit talk you. I'm very open about my dislike of you. I think you're one very manipulative person who loves to take advantage of your fans. Yep. Creators asked you about your weird relationship when you publicized it, which you very much did, Boogie. We all thought it was creepy. Now, uh, again, before Boogie talks over, when he's talking about group chat, group chat is a private chat that creators have between each other. This is not a public statement of fact. Under it, I said, when you tell people a girl... Uh, Danny Fallen says, this seems to me to be one of the most cut, clear, clear cut AstroTurf documentaries of all time. They either sought out or Boogie paid a production company to build a documentary to try and rebound his career because he needs the attention if the documentary itself doesn't make it clear. This, this, uh, this aftermath does. Yep, absolutely. I agree. But the problem is a lot of people keep going around calling it a documentary. They keep pretending like there's some value of truth in it, and there isn't. What we've seen is that even when I was just watch watching it without all of the context of these conversations, I had not seen any of these conversations. It was easy for me to point out, um, for me, as somebody who puts a critical eye towards these things as a part of my career, it was easy for me to see areas where this documentary was manipulative. And now we've seen just how far it went. The creator was making up numbers. Boogie was making up numbers. Details have been completely fudged. I mean, drastically. He's talking about how he's gonna, he's, he's about to be homeless. In the documentary, multiple times he claims he's gonna be homeless while he knows while he knows he's sitting on $225,000 on his home. It's all just a big old fraud. And being able to spot this type of manipulation and misinformation is important. And this is a fun way to teach that. Because following weird YouTube drama can be fun sometimes. You met just turned 18 because Keemstar was the one. This also makes me think the Keemstar stuff is totally AstroTurf. That's what I was saying, that I think that's fake too. I think that the Boogie, uh, the Boogie Keemstar clips is is trying is basically a a a performance uh it's 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 performance art advertisement for the lol cow podcast one that told us about this in a group chat and we were kind of a little bit grossed out but i didn't make a public matter of fact statement because that's just keemstar's word i'm not going to publicly defame somebody when there's no hard proof so before you go i never did i never did there you go that's your lie that you got caught up in so uh, wait uh, read talk your way to, through it read the tweet again Yo, read the, read your tweet. Tweet again. i'm so sorry I, i'm i'm done with some shit <clears throat> read read your tweet again, if you don't mind. Y'all expect me to go wild about these keys. No, 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 his, uh, his tweet. The one where he says that I was telling people that she was 18. Can you tell me that part again? Uh, when you tell people a girl you meet just turned 18, it creeps us all out. You're a gross See, humanizer. I never said that, though. So there, Keemstar said that. Keemstar told us that. Yeah, but I didn't, and that's what's important. You said okay. that I okay, said so it. Okay, so then why are you getting mad at me? You said that I said it. When you did said I that say that? I said it. You, just yeah, because Keemstar said that you said it to him. But I never did. Well, anyway. So Keemstar, Keemstar, hey, low cal chat. Right, so Why do you work with a guy that just slandered you? What the f You're such I, a bitch! I'm a forgiving why? guy, man. I, 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 why? F Keemstar's gonna make me money, I'm just here to make money. And you're okay Keemstar's gonna make me money, I'm just here to make money. It's funny, because that is the truth. That is the only truthful thing that he's ever said in all of this. The only truthful thing that he's ever said is that I'm just here to make money. And that's what he re refers to in the end. It's all just a big game to him including uh, manipulating his viewers, including lying all over the place. He is just a giant manipulative person and no one should trust him. This should be the end of Boogie2988. And I mean that. This should be the, the point where people say, this guy has no credibility. He will do anything and everything to manipulate his way back into the, uh, back into the, um, back into the spotlight and it's not just he's not just like an entertainer he's not just playing pranks or whatever he's deliberately trying to get into the spotlight so he can convince people to give him money personally so that he can pull their heartstrings he's a charlatan and a fraud Game star just wants fuck? to make me money. I'm here to make me money. I, you know, Man, you're the one who tweeted it. Mad, bro. Didn't you point out that it was a private oh. chat. Didn't you point out it was a private? You're the one that mentioned it. You brought that private chat up into the limelight. You mentioned be my name in that post. That's why I mm -hmm. both tweeted you. All right, I think we've seen enough of this. That moment right there really does it. I don't need to see the last fizzling out of this conflict. Um, that that moment right there. I'm just here to make money. Really does sum it all up.
The documentary is full of nonsense. It's a it's full of a bunch of lies. Boogie has confirmed uh, that 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 a lot of the numbers were just made up. He's now confirmed that his house is worth more than he says. He's he's given away accidentally that he actually has more money sitting in Ethereum in crypto still than he lets on in the documentary. The guy is doing just fucking fine. He's trying to find a new way to manipulate his fans. And this documentary is an enabling tactic to do so. And guess what? The document, the documentarian, quote unquote, has money to make in the process. And guess what? He has $3.9 million peddling lies to try and make Boogie money while he makes some money himself. It's a big load of bullshit. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this a deep dive into the Boogie 2988 drama, please make sure that you press subscribe down below. Uh, my name is Demon Mama, of course, and you should be subscribed to my channel because I do banger content that doesn't involve a bunch of hapless, annoying e-bagging. <sighs>